How's it going, guys? D here, FTO Nerd Talk. I got the head dude, the head guy. Talking about Lonzo. You go by Lonzo, right? Oh, Lonzo Star. Alonzo, Big Tuna, Big Derek, Tuna. you know. <laughs> That's a story. Talking about a lot of names, man. See, I was going to ask you some questions about concrete, but first you got to tell me about this Big Tuna. What's, uh, what's Big Tuna? How did you get that name? <laughs> well, funny story is I like tuna. You know what I'm saying I'm, I'm always okay. eating tuna sandwiches. So my friends would call me tuna sometimes back in the day. I added the big on it because I'm always making big moves. And everybody, <laughs> yeah, everybody stuck with. So it just you know stuck mean? with you, huh? Yeah, it stuck stuck with me, bro. That's you know crazy. I, mean? I love it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you got uh, you got three titles that are out right now with Concrete, yes, and you got a, you got a fourth one coming out. I think. Uh, I think Daniel told me in November, Starboy comes yes, out, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Got Starboy a Kickstarter in November. Got a Kickstarter along um, with it too. We we are planning a crowdfunding. We don't know how how we're gonna put it together yet, but um, we want to make it an event. You know, kind of like the last one was an event. So this year is gonna be an event too. Oh, it's gonna be awesome! All right, let's get down to it. Acolyte, he's a big uh -oh. dude. He's a big bad dude. He has a, he's he has a big some, bad man. He has some dad issues. Damn. He got yeah, a few yeah, names yeah. too. The Son of Supreme. That's one of his names. And what's uh? Yeah. What's their the name? Son that of he Supreme has? and the Moonwalker. The Moonwalker. Where did that idea come from, Moonwalker? Well, you learn more throughout his book, but um, his his nickname throughout the cosmos is the Moonwalker because people usually see him walking across, you know, different different landscapes of the cosmos, but he particularly likes to chill on the moon okay. of Earth. And you'll see that more so in issue two. Really? Yes, Cause, sir. Because issue one had, uh, it had, I guess, like his his unknown ancient father show up and give him these powers. Right, right, Spoiler. right. Spoiler for anyone who hasn't read it yet. It, like, right. it shows like him getting his powers, but... Uh, <laughs> Like you got you gonna just like you gonna flash forward like show us a little bit more like that that's been happening to him since then oh, or like see when you look at it like this issue one is actually acolyte origins but it's the middle of it I started you in the middle of his origins so okay. I have I I have space where I'm gonna go back before wow. then and I'm gonna fill in the gap between issue one and issue two because a lot of stuff happened between there. I wanted to kind of have that Star Wars feel to it, you know what I mean? It kinda does. I start you, I start you already in the story, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull you, twist and turn you from the past and the future, and then bring you back to the present again. You know what I'm saying? You can, you can see that that Star Wars feel. You see the Star Wars feel with the with the wardrobe, with the ships, like with like mm -hmm. the actual feel of the characters. It's kind of hyper real, but like it it I'm works. Big Star Wars fan. I was, I was raised on that Star Wars life. You know, <laughs> I was gonna ask you if any character from DC and Marvel you compare Acolyte to, but since you're saying that, what Star Wars character would you compare Acolyte to? I wouldn't really compare. You know, obviously we all take inspirations from things that we see, right? Right. But when I created Acolyte, it was more so based on my personal dreams and what I wanted to do. I've always been big on astronomy, and I've always wanted to, um, you know, travel the stars and discover new planets, new worlds, and um, through through my comic book, I'm able to create things that I would love to see. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? I get that. How long, uh, how long yeah. have you been doing Concrete? How long has Concrete been established? <clears throat> uh, concrete Comics has only been established for about a year and a half now. A year and a half? Concrete, concrete Music. I dropped my first music pro project in, um, I think it was like 20, 2012 or 2013. So I kind of started with the concrete brand around that time, around around like 2012. Did you make any albums? Yeah, I have I have um, a few projects out. So I mainly was a single artist because you know, as an independent, people aren't really looking for your album. Right. They want to hear those singles, those singles. songs that come out, stuff like that. So I was mainly focused on that. But we are we are gearing up to do a, another big music release on the music department, so. Right. It's All right. Fun, man. Is it gonna, you know? is it gonna coincide with the comic book company also? Oh, yes it is, man. Really? Um, Con Concrete Comics will have a soundtrack that we're gonna try to drop yearly. 
So, so besides yourself, any artists that you can tell me about that's going to be a part of this? Um, you got my boy Naeem. He's he's actually um, he's actually uh, I would I got him listed on here as co-creator. Oh he's, damn. He's the guy that I um, I drop him crazy early in the morning, late at night. <laughs> I got a whole plan. I'd be like, yo, I got a plan I got to lay on you. How's it sound? So I lay it down, and he's real good at making sure I don't um, skip over details that I have planned for later on, or gotcha. I don't, I don't, I don't contradict myself. You know what I'm saying? So makes sense. Also, you can see that in the pages. Right. So yeah, I mean, he, he's he's been real vital in this acolyte book. Him, Daniel, Jamil. Bonaggi, they've all like we all help each other out. So I get you. If you had to pick a favorite between all these uh, all these titles at Concrete, which one which one would you pick if you had to? That's not mine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's it's hard, man, because each title gives you a different a different a different vibe from the universe. When you when you look at Acolyte, he represents the cosmos, everything from the cosmos down. Right, Solver is from hell and up. Right. And then Odina is right here. Right on the surface, so, yeah. So, so we're giving you every level of the universe through these three titles. And, and then Star, Star Boy bring just in bounces Star all over the place. Yeah. Starboy is going to bring in the multiverse. See, you know what I'm saying? So oh, yeah. each each character we bring in is is literally introducing to another section of the universe. And oh. it's going to, you know, it's just going to keep spreading. So No, I dig it. You got any new characters yeah. coming out? I do. I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it. Okay, though, because... no, no worries. <laughs> you know I'm big just, in the, you know I'm big in the team books. I love those big those, know, those team books. Just know that those that all the issue twos are coming out and okay. Andy. And then there's a possible another four books. Another four books. Four four to four to five, maybe. You know what I'm can't, saying? But that's all I can tell you. Oh, you can't tell They're, me like when when those are those number twos are coming out? Um, oh, um, the number twos are coming out this year. Um, we plan on doing a reveal for the dates within the next uh, couple weeks. Really? But um, they're all done. They're already inked, colored. They're getting lettered right so you now. You guys are just sitting on them, just letting that hype just build up, then, huh? That's all we do, brother. <laughs> Sit, wait, let it marinate a little bit. Pick our pick our target date, and then once we set it, you know what I mean. I get you. All right, uh, let's take a little yeah. break from talking about uh, talking about concrete for a second. You brought up Star Wars. There's like there's been a lot of new Star Wars movies out from like you know Episode Seven to the, right. sol- the solo film Rogue Rogue One. Right, right. Which one of those like like do you prefer to watch, or like you more like a Mandalorian type of guy? Man, like I'm not like most of these new guys that complain about everything. I kind of take things for what they are. You know what I'm like, saying? I got like, it. It's at, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I'm not putting my money out to make it. I am paying for it. Right. And I'm at the at the at the bottom line, I'm entertained. And if I'm entertained, you know what I mean? Like I haven't watched a Star Wars movie where I wasn't entertained, should I say? You know what I mean? Because they all have so, good parts inside of it. They all have good parts. Man. I don't mind I don't mind how the how the trilogy ended for this for these new um, these new movies, you know, it kind of it kind of seems fitting. Like it's a new generation. It's different. You're like it's kind of not for you, but you're sharing you know it. Exactly. So I feel to that. me, it was fine. I, I was totally that. fine with it. You know what I'm saying? But, That's um, I appreciate that. You don't hear that from any fans out there, like about man, like you know new content. So I I appreciate all of them. I would I do wish we would have got to see Luke a little bit more, Han right. Solo a little bit more, but right. I understand. Those guys are old as hell right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> they got they, things they to do. They are literally yeah. old as hell, man. You know? So. They got things to do. No, I get that. Uh, all right. To get back to uh, to Concrete, you you talked about Odina and you talk about Absolver. Um, Absolver has some characters inside of it that, that didn't tell you who they were. Like uh, Absolver's uh, second person, the, the lady that was with them, who told mm-hmm. him what he was, that he was a Mizo, and then you got like an right. actual superhero in that world who wears all green, and we don't right, really right. know who that character is. Like, who are these characters? Can you tell us about those characters? I can't tell you too much about them. I can tell you that they are in the Absolver verse, and okay. um, you will be seeing one of them very soon, actually. She, she, she actually, the girl, the one that was in the blue who was on the rooftop right. within the first couple of pages, 
you'll be seeing something of her real soon popping up on the website. I think it's going to be a free download too. So. Okay. Wow. Wow. You really hit a whole lot of content coming. You hitting bro. everybody with whole, everything, man. Whole lot of content coming, man. You know what I mean? A whole lot. So. So a year and a half just came out. Like you got like. You got. You said you got uh, at least four more issues for each one of those characters coming out soon. Also, you guys got to be pretty tired right now, right? Oh no, nah, man. It's all you know. It's all in the prep game, man. I'm you know I'm, I'm big on. I'm a strategist, man. So, yeah. You know I plan. I plan well and how we can really um, you know. It's kind of impossible to compete with the big two. It's They've hard. been doing it. The big two been doing this for literally a hundred years. You yeah. know what I mean? And we're 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 babies. Like we're premature in the comic <laughs> book industry. So the benefit of being in this this indie community is that um, you know, the people that we do have relationships with, we can we can almost compete with the big two on a grand scale of multiple uh books coming out. So when right. I'm not out Maybe Constant Hustle's out. I can tell my fans, go over to Constant Hustle, go check them out. I love that Constant Hustle's not out. We can go somewhere else. And, you know, just just share the indie love because that's really what we need to do to to survive out here. You know what I mean? Since you're talking about that Constant Hustle and, like, you're talking about, like, you know, sharing, like, the indie love also, the characters inside your books are predominantly Black and Latinx characters. And right. – there, there's a big love and draw and want and need for more representation of characters like that. And like your company helps do that. What, right. uh, well, what would, what would, what would be like the draw to get people to want to read these books if they are black Latinos? What, what's the big push for them like, to check these stories out? You think? Um, being authentic, being, you know, not, not being gimmicky, not pandering, you know, just being, you know, we don't have to, promote that you're a black comic book character right. to black fans. They're going to look at the book. They're going to see, see it face. for themselves. Right. They're going to see his face. So you don't have to say, hey, black characters, black this, black that. You know, just, just be authentic and people will respect you for being real. And I think that's, that's where the love comes from concrete because we're not, we're literally making comics for the love of making comics. Gotcha. If, it, if we were making this for money, we'd have been tapped out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> people, people would have saw right through you yeah we would have been tapped out because yeah. it's, it's not a lot of money in comics you know what i mean like you have to love doing what you're doing to do it not not for so, small indie companies absolutely not no so i, I see what you're exactly. saying there absolutely um <clears throat> when it came to uh like the new stuff you guys got coming out like i'm really i'm really excited for that i'm really pumped to see what you guys are going to be doing but uh you say you got you got four different characters. They have their own separate like scope or views that they're doing. Which one mm -hmm. should people really be excited for? Like if it's yours, be honest with me. Tell me it's yours. Like I just I want I want you to suffer any feet. I don't want you like to, to make a guy think about like what comics should we really just be focused on laser focus when it comes like the country comics. For the for the for the fans, right? Yeah, for the fans. Fans of comics. Um, you should really just. It's so hard to say, bro, because everybody likes something different. I can't, yeah. you know, some some people, for for instance, we'll be at a Comic Con. Somebody will look at my book, right? Right. Then we'll ask them, hey, what type of characters do you usually like? They'll say, well, I I love Ghost Rider. We'd be like, well, check out Absolver. Check out Absolver, <laughs> right? <laughs> so the Absolver, and then they pick it up, and they're like, oh my goodness. But you know what they do? They be like, but I also like act like Anna Odina. So I want those too. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you know what I mean? It's kind of the way we are designed where we're hitting everything that you could possibly like at one time. Gotcha. We just, we kind of all get to love at the same time. It's not just like one character here, one character there. Like people love Odina. People love yeah. Acolyte. They love Absolver. But each of those fans are different. So, you know what I mean? It's kind of hard, hard to put a stamp on which one's like the most excited to read. It's hard because, you know, it depends on what your flavor is. Some yeah, people like that. the blood and the gore. Yeah. So we send them right downstairs to Absolver. <laughs> <laughs> and some people just like, like the good old-fashioned beat them up, and that's where like Odina comes in. like the good old fighting. We take Odina. Some yeah. people like to really explore their brain with concepts they didn't hear of, things to, you know, act like. And then like a good old, good old shoot them up, right? A good, a good shoot them up. And then we got Starboy who's going to – he's 
he's really going to have that Deadpool feel right. to the universe. You know what I'm saying? I, I read the so two pages. Mix up. It was hilarious. Right. Like I, I don't know, I don't know what Daniel's doing on his off time, but like, dude has a has a crazy imagination, man. Daniel's working on some 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 good, like his his writing ability is crazy, man. He's he's been doing he's it since really, he was thirteen, so he tells me. Yeah, yeah. Nuts. He's he's definitely a uh, first round draft pick, man. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I, he's I, a fourth, definitely. Him. He's a fourth to be right. I like the way you him, put man. that, though. Yeah, that's right. good. I, I can't explain it, bro. You know right I mean? on. He's, he's a dope dude, man. I agree. Um, take a little break again for Concrete. Talk to you about something that's happening on Netflix. It's quarantine. We're not doing much. Uh, Avatar, The Last Airbender is on Netflix. Have you been watching? Bro, I haven't watched it. Ooh. I, I lost. So, you know what? After that movie they brought out years <laughs> ago, man. With M.I. Shyamalan, right. I lost, I lost so much faith. It honestly, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like it kind of hit me a little hard too, man. Yeah, I, I, I'm right there with you. Hit me hard. Brother. Yeah, like that movie was just. It wasn't as, bad as the Dragon Ball, the Tekken. It was close, oh, close quarters to that. You know what I mean? At least Tekken had like you know some kind of flair to it. Yeah. Some, some eye candy. I haven't, Second half, parents, my man Yoshimitsu. Oh my goodness! So there's that. I don't know. If yeah. You, I don't know if you remember what Yoshimitsu looked like, but he looked horrible <laughs> in the movie. Like, he looked ridiculous. Didn't look like he did in the video <laughs> games. I'll say that. Not at all. And and then, <laughs> right, right. And then when you look at Dragon Ball Z, Piccolo looked horrible. Yeah, you know I mean? Goku. Goku looked horrible, actually. <laughs> I, I I didn't watch it in theaters, and thank goodness I didn't. So I hear you. Neither did I. But if we talking about net, I haven't really been watching Netflix like that, bro. To be what have you been watching? I've been watching Attack on Titans. Really? Uh, Have they been Titans, giving you nightmares? Fan of that. No, I don't. I can't watch it around them. The kids? You know yeah. I sure no, the, I get that. I got to make sure the <laughs> wife and the kids are asleep, man. But I've been watching that. I've been watching My Hero. Good and, stuff. Watch that with my daughter. She loves it. And I've been watching um, some old school sci-fi, man. Yeah? Yeah. Right on. Right on. It's always good to go back and like look at those old worlds that people build and say, like, you know what? I can see yeah. how that translates into now. Like uh, Demolition Man. There's so many uh, parallels from here and now. I love, I love Demolition Man. I love Judge Dredd. I love yeah. Predator, Aliens. Yeah. I actually I actually wanted to rewatch Total Recall, man. I oh, want to. Wow go back with the total recall because the way that movie played out was so dope like how he was he was actually a spy that was trying to get away from his spy life and then he went to take a vacation but that jarred his mind back to the spy life then he didn't know what was real or just, not. just went mean? back and forth each other yeah it was back crazy forth, man so that colin farrell remake was really good too like I, I know a lot of people said it wasn't i enjoyed it the the column was cool. It kind of reminded me a lot of Minority Report, though. You know I what I'm saying? I can see that. I can see that. A whole lot of whole lot of Minority Report vibes to it, but overall, it was pretty good, though. Right on. All right, give give back the concrete. Talking about a lot of nerd stuff. We're nerds, though. That's what happens. It happens. Hey, listen, I'm a nerd <laughs> at heart, man. You know? Right on. Uh, you got like those comic books that are coming out, four for each title, which is just like crazy by itself. But like, well, what's like, what's the five year goal or, or 10 year goal for Concrete Comic Books? What do you see you guys like in like five or 10 years? I asked everybody that question. I have to ask. <clears throat> well, the, the comics open up doors for other ventures as far as film, animation, music. Um, you know, we really want to, um, like right now, the out? current, we, we're, we're packaging ourselves to be able to shop two film companies. You know what I'm oh, saying? Wow. So as the, the more we do well with the comics, the better our chances are with doing that. You know what I'm saying? So Jeez. you guys really are. So everything, all everything's right kind of all cylinders, man. Yeah, like you know, there's the the five year plan would definitely be one of my dreams is to open up my own comic book shop. So you know what I'm saying? If I could do that, uh, a black owned indie. Indie comic only too. Like I just want to do indie comic. Really? In my comic book store. That's it. Uh, like only I want, indies. 
hopefully get you back on the show again so I can like find out what you mean by like indie. I want to I want to hear what that sounds like because I, I in my head I can't picture what that looks like right now. That that sounds right, like, man. I don't know. Yeah. I never I've never seen that before. It's always been DC and Marvel or Image. Like I never seen saying, this, like straight up indie before. That sounds that sounds. Somebody got to cool. start a bookstore for the little guys. There you go, man. You know I saying? appreciate it's that. It's gonna be me. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, it's uh, going to be Big Tuna, you know? It's going to be Big Tuna. There you go. <laughs> there it is. Uh, Acolyte has – I'm not sure if it's two dads that are issues or just one dad issue, but, like, there's definitely, like, some father issue going on with Acolyte. Why did you choose to use that narrative for that character? So, Acolyte has a dad. Right. He's, we see, you know, we see him in the comic. Well, well, well that's, that's his cosmic pops. You know what I'm saying? But think about Abner. Abner visited Earth a millennia ago, a long right. time ago. And, you know, he, he, he met a little woman that he liked. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then that gene laid dormant from generation to generation to generation, and yeah. it popped up in Acolyte. But right. Acolyte has a daddy on Earth. He has a daddy and a mommy. He has, you know, that's why he was... He was he Apprehensive was about like, accepting like, yeah. He was like, what do you mean? I have a dad. You're not my dad. You know what I mean? But technically... Abner is his father because the gene popped up in him. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. You, you gave him two dads inside this combo. Like, like, why, why go that route? Like, I, it's, it's rarely seen something like that. I just thought it was dope, man. You know what I mean? It just, it was just mind boggling me because he's he's just an average guy, a normal guy from Earth that had a normal life, normal family. Then he gets told, "Hey, you're not just who you think you are. Right. Come with me." I, somebody needs to meet you. And then when he meets the guy, the dude awakens the whole power inside of him. And then he realizes, oh, snap, like, I am somebody else. And now, to me, I just thought that was just, just a cool concept, man. You know what he, I mean? He kind of didn't want the powers either. Kind of like a, like a Jesus story when you think about it. Like, he didn't, he didn't want to have all that power, all that weight on his shoulders. It, it, yeah, like, it, his life was totally different now. You know what I'm yeah. saying? He didn't he, – he originally – he originally didn't want to do any of this, but he has no choice. This is who he is. Gotcha. Um, yeah, there was a funny little short you guys brought out with uh, Acolyte and Odina with the billboard. Right, right. That was, that was hilarious, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Do we get to see, like, in the comic books, how those two meet? We do get to see how they meet. Um, we're... We're kind of going to throw throw our audience into where they already know each other. And okay. then we will go back to when they did meet. But when you think about Acolyte, he's already, from from issue one to issue two, he's been on Earth already about 10 years with his powers. Okay. When you see him in issue two, he's already a little seasoned. Gotcha. And Odin has been around, too. So they... Is they would they would know of each of other. each other. You don't know how close they know. Each other. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. But me and me and me and Onaji like to play off of our actual personalities, how we joke with each other. You right. know what I'm saying? So it's translating into our shorts and our minis. And <laughs> you guys can make like, like an secret, annual or to give you a secret. Please go ahead. Right Acolyte and Acolyte and Odina have a little have a little something in the works right now. Oh jeez. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think you just shook a lot of fans right now, dude. Hey, hey listen, man, it's we just, we have so much we want to do. It's right. just not enough money to go around. You know what I'm saying? No, I get that. I get that. I can't wait to read that combo. That sounds like that sounds like a page turner. Those two characters together, just doing whatever they're doing. Sounds, well, it's gonna be dope. It sounds hilarious and fun at the same it's time. It's gonna be man. real dope, man. It's gonna it's gonna take Odina somewhere that you wouldn't expect her to go. Yeah. You know All right. Because like yeah. she's she's no nonsense, man. Full on. And I know like, like that, that was a trope. Like for a lot of black women in the in the, in the eighties and black exploitation stuff, but like, but she she has like a new standard of like very Cardi B style of like no nonsense. Oh yeah, like, don't no fuck with me, guys. Yeah. Oh, I yeah, dig you it. know she she originally wanted to she doesn't want to be a superhero. You no, know what I mean? she hated so, it. Being thrusted into it, she's like, come on, I should let I should get it over with. Show me the bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> and she owns so, them yeah. every single time. Every like it's time. nothing. But in her book, you will see her get challenged, man. It's dope. Really? So she won't be like, oh, a, like a Mary Sue kind of character. She definitely, like, she will have her losses and learn from them. Oh, no. She comes, 
she comes across some challenges, even even in her issue one. At the end of the book, you know, she came across somebody that was a, a little more seasoned than she was expecting. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that is true. And, you know, so as her story progresses, you'll definitely see more challenges come about. You know what I mean? That's awesome. Um, I, think I got a few more questions for you. This one here is about uh, Absolver. So a lot of his mythos take place in the underworld and hell. How much of like a Christian religion are you going to use inside that concept? Like how supernatural you use like the actual Bible for the stories that he used? Are you going to do, are you guys do a lot of that for Absolver also? Well, you know, that guy, the mill is a, uh, a wild thinker. You yeah. know what I mean? But um, from what, what I know is he's, He's taken from all religions. Okay. He's gonna flip it up. Really? Down. Yeah, like we, you'll see inspirations from a lot of different religions and a lot of parables from other, you know, other stories. But I think Christianity will be kind of the foundation because that's what we we mainly know of. Right. But he's gonna be throwing other other things into that pot. You know. Oh, see, now that's interesting. I bet it, a lot of antagonists. Really cool. Yeah. Wow. A whole lot of antagonism. I love his, the, the villain for his main arc is one of my favorites in Concrete. Really? You see a shadow of him in issue one. Right. Right, right. Like you see him chomping too. You, but yeah. You see a, you see a shadow. <laughs> but he's he's going to be, uh, he's something to look at. I just say that. You, <laughs> uh, I guess like besides Odina and perhaps Acolyte, do you have like any, any kid friendly titles coming out anytime soon? Uh, we actually do. Um, my daughter has a comic book coming out. Really? Who's yeah. drawing it? Um, we might. Um, we got a good artist named Leandro. He's the one that did the. He he did the two pages for Starboy and the two pages of Odina. Oh, it's gonna have great and art then. Oh, it's gonna have some kick ass yeah, art inside of it. His name is Leandro. He's a real dope, real dope artist from Brazil. Oh man, yeah. you got you got the kids making kids comics. That's different. That's cool, man. Kids, 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 kid, kids is coming, man. I'm actually, me and her were just designing the character about a half an hour ago. Yeah, just getting it right. But for her story is her story is already mapped out. Now we just got to write it, and then we can put it in production. And then you're good to go. That's, that's looking like a, a a late 2020, early 2021. Okay. Can you tell me anything about it? Um, <laughs> yeah, well, she'll, she'll probably kill you. It's fine. No worries, man. No, no, no. I can't tell you nothing about okay. that. Okay. No I'm worries. All, it's good. Hold, hold that one in the top. You know? <laughs> well, I'm sure my kids would be happy to read a book that's written by a kid, also. I can't, I can't wait to check it out. It'll be cool, man. It'll, it'll definitely be cool, man. I, you know, working with kids is something that we, we definitely want to start um, branching out to and working more. With, with the communities that we live in as well, so you know, what I mean, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of things that you're gonna see concrete getting their hands into. I mean, a lot more, a lot more hands-on community work. You, you guys are I mean? all over the place. That's awesome. I'm digging. I'm digging that big time. Uh, hey man, we got to do something, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's like we can't do much right now. So yeah, no, I get it. Can't do much. <laughs> uh, a lot of the, the story takes place like in actual city, like in uh, I think it was all birth in Jersey. Uh, Aldina is uh, is it Baltimore that she's in? No, um, she's in Atlanta. She's in Atlanta. That's that's exactly where Onaji is right now, right? Mm -hmm. Right. And like your you, uh, other character, uh, Acolyte, is he going to be set anywhere? Like that's real long. Sound? He's 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 in a fictional city called Sapphire City, but it's actually it's actually um where I grew up, right outside of Philadelphia. I just okay. named it Sapphire City, but um, he's based. Basically, like on the map, he's right next to Philadelphia. So, are you, you going to put like any kind of landmarks like that we can recognize inside these comic books? Also, oh, it's going to be some real landmarks, man. It's going to be it's going to be a perfect blend, you know, kind of like how they do on Young Justice, right? You know how they blend in the real cities with Metropolis and Gotham and stuff like that. So it'll yeah. be it'll be kind of like that. Oh, you know nice. I mean? See, like you're hyping me up right now, man. You're speaking my language to an old like comic head. You're speaking my language oh, yeah. right now, dude. Like this is this is like my my jam and jelly right here, dude. It's gotta be real, man. What 
what better way to, to get people to feel what you're writing but with by putting in things that they recognize? You Something know? familiar. Statues, yeah. buildings, whatever, people. Yeah. You know? So is that is that gonna be a part of it too? Like any kind of celebrities you're gonna put inside of it? I don't know if we got the rights to do that, but, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I would love if we could, you know what I'm saying? Hey, there's always uh, Instagram influencers you can throw into the mix. There's always that. There is true. I, you know, <laughs> I actually, like, like uh, a lot of the people in my book are actually my friends. And, like, right like my, you know, um, I'm sure that you're probably going to ask me about this, but Cosmosis and Monetists were made off of my mom and dad. Okay, you know yeah. I was getting there. Yeah. <laughs> Is that, right, why she, right. why, is that why her hair is the universe and like and he's scary as hell? Cosmos, it, it, it's the dynamic of my parents. Right. Like on. literally, you know what I mean? My mom's, my mom, well, my dad is actually the enforcer, but my mom's the shot caller. And that's basically what you see. With that's him, what you, you see, know? yeah. She makes you up know? the rules and he just follows suit, yeah. He don't really say much, but. You know, it's, it's going to be fun if I ever show you. Well, she's the only one that can hear him speak. You know what I'm saying? No one else can hear him. Kind of like a black folk Medusa type thing, right? Kind of like how, you know how like Groot, Groot is. How only a couple people know what Groot's saying. Right. But she's the only one divine enough to know what he's saying. Gotcha. Gotcha. I get that. I was going to ask mm-hmm. you about those characters, and you did answer one of the questions I had for you had for me. Uh, but the... Uh, do we see them again? Because it seems like they're like, they're like see, an in and out. You do see them, but they're, when you think about them, think about, think about the, the hierarchy in Marvel. Like think about the, um, the one above, not the one above all, but like somebody underneath them. They're, like, they're. Like the beyond there? Oh, yeah, like they're, they're right at, they're right at the ceiling. There's mm-hmm. no one above them. Besides divinity, gotcha. you don't know who divinity is, but divinity is the top of the line. And so we won't. Them too. So when we do see them, it's going to matter very much to the story. When you see, well, right now, I'll say this: Cosmosa is in a playful mood. She's just looking around, just having fun, just 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 looking around. Well, she's a trickster god, kind of. She's not really a trickster. She's just she's just playful right now. But gotcha. her wrath. If you notice in issue one, Abner, um, his dad was shook when she came. Right. He knows what she's about. Um, but so, yeah, like she, you'll see them, but not on no large, you know, scale of them in the book fighting and stuff like that. They're the kind of people that can come and wave a hand and things are, That'd things be that. Are happen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Wow. All right. I uh, got one last question for you. Uh, you've been, you and Daniel and like all the other guys at Concrete have been rocking these cool shirts. Is there anywhere that we can find those cool shirts? They're all on ConcreteComics.com. All of them? They're all on there. I mean, it's, it's actually a whole bunch of new lines and com- colors coming too. When, um, that's in development right now. We're going to have the hats, the shirts, hoodies for, for the fall season. You really um, are. Pants, all everything. that, man. We're going, you're getting, you're we're going all out. <laughs> Bro, we're going all listen, there's no hold your bars no more. I, I you know like this. Mean? I like I like the excitement, our, I like the enthusiasm. Goal, our, our goal is to be bigger than life. And you can't do that without taking that jump. Or as they said in Spider Man, taking that leap of faith. Taking right? a leap of faith. Or or you yeah. gotta take the leap of faith. Or else you'll be sitting back saying, I wish I I wish I, I wish yeah. I woulda. I wish I coulda. I refuse to I refuse to ever say that. You know So saying? right now Right now, when it comes to concrete, you have you have no regrets. Oh, well, I have no regrets, man. We we put it all on the line, bro. And right you know, just putting out a book is a gamble. You don't know if people are gonna like it or not. You no. know what I'm saying? You never know. Putting out our two pages, we don't know what people are gonna say. Somebody could rip us to shreds. You know, well, I'm, I'm glad no one has. I'm glad no one <laughs> exactly. has. Exactly, exactly. It's good. But, you know, you guys deserve the praise. Those are the risks you take. Those are the risks you take when you put yourself into the world. You know what I mean? And True. a lot of people see see that when it comes to, you know, trolls or other people like that. But just just being a creator, even doing what you're doing yeah. is a hard job. Because, it's not easy. No. You know, it's not hard because, you know, you have to hold that knowledge in there because somebody's going to call you out on it. Right? Yeah. It happens exactly. quite often. Yeah. 
Exactly, man. So doing what we do, all of us in this medium of comics is hard. Like you, Grandmaster Facts, all you guys, yeah, all are incredible with what you do. You know what Agreed. I mean? So Agreed. Like they're all great. It takes a lot of heart to do this, man. Where can, we, to, where can we find you? Where can we find you in Concrete Comics? Uh, you, can, you can find me at Lonzo underscore star on Instagram. And you can find me at The Legend of Acolyte on Instagram. And I'm the guy you're always talking to on ConcreteComics.com, <laughs> Concrete Comics IG, Facebook. Just contact us anywhere. But Concrete Comics spelled like this, K-O-N-K-R-E-T. Keep it concrete, man. Keep it concrete, man. That's how we do. You know, oh, uh, there it is. 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 You see it, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I guess I, I guess I should ask this: Are you guys taking in new submissions from creators? We get a lot of submissions. Really? Um, you know, yeah. You know, some of them don't fit what we're what we put out as a company. Uh, Concrete Comics is. We specialize in superhero, sci-fi, horror. Well, I, I, I wouldn't say, I, I, that's not horror. Um, I guess thriller, should I say. Okay. Like superhero thriller type stories. Because Spawn is, Spawn is a what? A, it's kind of like a thriller like suspense. A, yeah. Okay, yeah, thriller suspense. So that's, that's mainly our lane. So things outside of that box don't really fit in with what we're building. You know gotcha. what I mean? But. We get a lot of good submissions, man. Um, you know, some of them are in the beginning of production stages, so it would take a while for them to come on, you know, board anyway. But a lot of people do contact us, whether it's writers, artists, um, you know, what I mean, colorists. Can they contact you yeah. at uh, all these sites you just talked about? Yeah, all man, they do a good job at already doing it. <laughs> <laughs> ConcreteComics.com. Right on. Uh, <laughs> on Concrete Comics on IG, you can contact us. Just message us anywhere you see us. Yeah. Message us. Message us anywhere. And All right. we will contact you back. This has been so much fun, man. Like I've been I've been trying to get a conversation with you for like what almost what nine months now? Having a, having a conversation. Bro, it's been a while, man. It's I've been, been a while. I've been rocking with you for a long time. It's, man. it's been it's been hard, man. Like I finally got the equipment to do. So I got a computer, got lights, got all this stuff. Like it's, Listen, man, got it's my kids. A headphones. lot more of these conversations too. Oh. Man. I mean, dude, that has to be. I'm in. I'm all in. You know, I love concrete comics. I'm all in. Man. I need. I need a hey, shirt. I appreciate you. <laughs> I got you on the show. I got a couple <laughs> chilling in the closet right now, right man. I, um, I definitely appreciate you having. Not only just me, but the whole family on, man, and, and just showing us love with this, this concrete week. I actually told the fellas that I'm going to make this like an annual week in the calendar now. You know what I'm saying? For every year, this is going to be a special week for us. You know God what I'm saying? Sake, so, I, will, I will love to see that. Like, you see you guys grow every single year with who or whomever you're talking with. I can't wait. Hey, man, it may be you every year that we hey, do this. Hey, hey, you know I'm not going to say no to that, dude. I'm not going to say no to it. <laughs> Well, I'm Dean, yeah, FTL Nerd Talk. Lonzo, thank you for being on, dude. <laughs> no problem, bro. Y'all can catch us at ConcreteComics.com. Keep it concrete. Take it easy, man. Keep it concrete, man.